He came unto his own, and his own received him not. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. Adam, our first parent, had sinned, rebelled against the God to whom he owed everything, the life of grace that he possessed in his soul, an uninterrupted succession of joys in this life. He was not to merit by his sufferings and his pains. He was to merit by his joys and then be taken from the garden of paradise to the kingdom of heaven without ever having died. But because of his rebellion, the sin, God, in all justice, he had every right to do so, he took away all of the gifts that he had given mankind. The worst was that man was then shut out forever from the kingdom of heaven. And by himself, by his own powers, he could do nothing to change this fact. The prophet Isaiah, we've been reading a lot of him throughout Advent, he tells us that God, in a sense, speaks of his own affliction for having lost men through sin. Isaiah says, And now what have I here, for my people is taken away needlessly? What delight have I now in heaven, now that I have lost men? And in the book of Proverbs it says, regarding God, My delights were to be with the children of men. We know, however, that God needed no man to complete his happiness. In himself, he was perfectly and eternally happy. But Cardinal Hugo, he has God saying this, I consider that I have lost all since my delight was to be with men, and now they're lost, doomed to live forever far away from me. Do you know that St. Thomas once said, God loves man as if man were the God of God himself, and without him he could not be happy. In this love that he has for mankind, he finds a way not to lose them. He promises a redeemer. Now this fact, this fact hits home and is expressed magnificently in St. Bernard's contemplation on this matter. St. Bernard of Clairvaux, he imagines a struggle taking place between the justice of God and the mercy of God. And the justice speaks up and says, I no longer exist if Adam is not punished for his willful sin. And then mercy pipes in, I am lost and I do not exist if man is not pardoned. I perish if he does not obtain forgiveness. And God, as it were, decides that in order to redeem mankind, someone perfectly innocent must die. On earth, though, there were no innocent men. They sinned through Adam. And since there are no men who are innocent, God seems to say, let someone, anyone, come forth to redeem them. All of heaven was silent. The angels uttered not a word. Countless hosts of them were silent. But then the Word, the second person of the Blessed Trinity, he says, here I am, send me. The angels cannot satisfy for such a sin, he said. And Father, if we would make man to love us, what better way than that I, the Word, the Eternal Word, in order to redeem mankind, should go upon earth, assume a human flesh, and by my death pay the penalty due to their sins. Thy justice would be fulfilled, and man would be convinced of our love. The Father responds, You will have to suffer a great deal. 
And the Son says, Here I am, send me. And God the Father then says, You will have to be born in a cave, flee into Egypt to escape your very enemies who seek to put you to death as an infant. And the Son, Here I am, send me. The Father responds, Reflect, think about it hard, that you will have to pass your days as a simple boy in a carpenter's shop. Here I am, send me. And the Father states, when you preach in your public life, the greater part of men will hate you. They will call you an imposter, a fool, a Samaritan. And then they will persecute you and put you to death in the most shameful way imaginable, that you will be thought a criminal hanged on the gibbet of a cross. And the son said, Nevertheless, Father, here I am, send me. The decree was then made that the divine son should be made man, and the archangel Gabriel comes down like a flash of light from heaven, speeding his way to Our Lady, who is humbly praying in her home. And Mary accepts him for her son, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. This is the truth, though. God so loved the world as to give his only begotten Son. And still, we are forced to admit, as we just said, and will say again in the last gospel, he came unto his own, and his own received him not. Already in Bethlehem, in that piercing cold air, there was no room for the Savior in the inn. He was to be in a cave outside the city walls. And it would be likewise at his death. He would die outside the city walls of Jerusalem. He had no nation, no city that belonged to himself. Father Faber, he's an interesting one to read. He said, Our Lord was not allowed to die a natural death. His life was trampled out of him as something tiresome, reproachful. He was buried swiftly so that his body might not offend the city on the national festival. And all this while, he was God who had come to save man. These are all very old thoughts these thoughts in the sermon, borrowed from saints and holy men, but they're always new. They grow deeper as we reflect on them more. That spirit of Bethlehem, it is the spirit of a world that has forgotten God. That is the spirit of the world today. When so many Never give a passing thought to God. Oh, you might, and maybe perhaps some of you here tonight, you have, this is only your first time the whole year at Mass. Because there is no time for God. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. When our Lord asks for something, think of what he has done for you. When he begs you to take this cross, to follow him, to enter into a certain state of life, whatever it be, whether it even be a simple thing as coming to Mass on a regular basis, remember that when you needed a Redeemer, he stood up. And he said, Father, here I am, send me. Looking at this tiny infant, the Word incarnate, the second person of the Blessed Trinity made an infant, could you really look at him? If he were to ask you for some favor, a rosary, a Hail Mary, a devoutly received Holy Communion, 
could you deny it? Or would you say to him, here I am, send me. This should be the spirit that we carry through this Christmas season. You have a heart, and you have a heart which was made for one purpose alone, and that, was, that is to love God. If your love is given to some other creature in place of God, then there can be no joy in this world. There can be no joy this Christmas for you. But St. Ignatius said, it is characteristic of God and of his angels to bring to the soul when they occupy it true happiness and spiritual joy and to drive far from it the sadness and trials which the enemy incites in it. So when you're feeling sad, depressed, anxious, angry, lonely, remember this. It doesn't have to be that way. It doesn't have to be that he came unto his own and his own received him not. You have a divine friend you have him here in the tabernacle. He dwells as well in heaven. When you have any of those feelings or emotions, he is a friend that has come. And he wants you to say as well, here I am, send me. May you have a blessed Christmas. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.